<laughs> wow. And just like that, all the cameras and sound were synced. And the stars were aligned. And we were ready. I get so involved in a boxing and UFC stuff. Yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> I'm <hoing. laughs> Shall I go into that one already? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, but let's, let's at least get into our intros. Hello, and welcome again to... Shh, the Kids Are Asleep podcast. Is that cringy for us to be like, shh? The kids are asleep. Who yeah. Cares? Who cares? Yeah, but... Let's just cringe it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My favorite thing in the world. <laughs> you really do... Um, we can talk find about cringy that cringy in everything. <laughs> yeah. Noises. Yeah. I just I'm very acute to just how, how things are said, the the way Did things Did we touch on this before? No. Uh uh-uh. you you Andy, you Andy, Andy, yeah. Andy's nodding yes. Um was it the first first uh podcast where we true. where we didn't Yeah, it was the first one. The test the test podcast, the yeah. first test. But you, you we didn't really touch base into the certain things that I find cringy. You kind of just made a statement like Vanessa finds everything cringy. Okay, that's right. Oh, we got into like mayonnaise and you saying mayonnaise or, or that's not mayonnaise. Really cringy. That's just kind of like pronouncing words and people and like their preferences. But I think we transitioned into that cuz no. I was I was talking about uh Oh, tummy. We tummy. Tummy yeah, belly. We, yeah, because we had gotten into a little, a yeah. little thing about that word. And you find it cringy. In some cases, it's not a cringy word. I say tummy to the boys, but what I said was, I think it's cringy when adults say tummy to other adults. <laughs> That's what I think is I cringy. Just feel like it's a normal thing. No, but, it, but anyways, let, let's let's get okay. into <laughs> things that when we were first getting to know each other and be around each other, and you moved in. Um. There was just little things that I started to notice that she just like was like, she would pause and she's like, why do you say it like that? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what did I say? Or what did I say? And or just sounds. There was moments where I would be pouring water into a glass and she would stop what she's doing, slowly turn at me and just give me this face. Almost like if nails to a chalkboard look. I was like, what? I, was like, I just I hate that sound. Or she needs like music while we're eating. She doesn't like the 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 table, you know, like the utensils scratching mm-hmm. on the plates, and mm-hmm. we're just very like, mm, let's find some music or let's watch something, mm-hmm. which I'm okay with. Yeah, but I just I think that's such an interesting thing because that I took in. Mm-hmm. I now hear things and I look at people, and now I'm I'm you. Like there's things about you that I've I've adopted. You know, and, and now it's become a part of my personality. You're welcome. <laughs> You're it's a welcome. gift, really. <laughs> oh, really? I know. No, it, it's, it's... How did that start? It's funny, though, because I've always I've always felt like when I'm in a room with people and I hear certain stuff and, like, I want to laugh about it, but nobody else catches it because now you can catch it, too. Or you've always been able to catch certain stuff. And we've been, we've been able to, like, kind of glimpse each other, like, did you get that? And then we'll both laugh about it. So what she's talking about, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like we're both observers. Yeah. Observers. Observers. Like I, said observe. ver- I said they're like a. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> like my dad would have said it, observers. He uses V's instead of B's, you know. Um, I think there's little things that, that we really take in or if someone is being a little too gloaty in a room and, you know, we'll both look at each other like, <laughs> Yeah. Um, probably similar to like what gossip girls do at like, you know, high schools. Like if like one, you know, teacher's pet is saying something and then like two besties are looking at each other like, oh my God, what a dork. Mm-hmm. Well, it's also easy, I feel like, to read the room for us. We can definitely spot out when something's, you know, yeah. shifted in the uh, environment or if somebody's off. The dynamics off. between people. Yeah. And I feel like for me and you, we can easily, s- it's going to sound more like see through people, like what they're doing, what their intentions are. Like the way they're talking right now, I'll be like, okay, this person's talking weird. Why? Yeah. Okay, this person's acting weird. Okay, this person totally just changed his personality. Yeah. Like it's easy for us to point that out and then not feed into it. Or if you meet people where you've heard their stories or, or you hear the way they introduce um, themselves to you, and then you hear them do the same spiel to like new people in the room, right? Mm. Um, so I don't know if you're thinking of the same person I am, um, but like my older brother Jeff, <laughs> right? 
See, so with that phase, you you already kind of got that. I love my brother. Like, I think he is one of the most like energetic. Just like loves to. Um, he's a, he's a people pleaser. You know, uh, he likes to share his stories. He can be a little vulgar with like some of the things he says, but he's really funny and he always means well. But but he's also like a very like romantic, you know, type of guy, and he wants people to know that like all the time. And I think it's like a really cute thing about him, actually, you know, um, I don't know. What was your like impression whenever you met my brother, Jeff? You, you gave me warnings <laughs> about. I did. Yeah. Not like I want to say warnings, but you would give me like a heads up, obviously, when I'm meeting somebody new. Uh -huh. You kind of give your partner like a heads up as to who they are, the kind of person they are. And yeah. I was like, OK, cool. You know, that's fine. I don't know if anybody else does that, too. Andy, do you whenever you're like, oh, just, so you know, like this person's a little. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to, especially like. If they're going to be awkward, like, you're like, hey. But if they have big personalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Like, yeah. you have to get ready. Yeah. yeah. It's, I think it's just out of respect, too. So if you know how your family members are and then you know how your partner is, you kind of need to warn them, like, hey, you know, this may be out of your comfort zone or you might get really along with this person or you might clash with this person. I think it's just, like, a good heads up. Mm -hmm. But you, obviously, we were meeting him for the – I was meeting him for the first time. And – I was like, I'm sorry, but, like, he's probably going to make – a bunch of penis jokes right yeah. away. And I was like, I mean, I, I don't care. Like, I, I, I'll i laugh along with it. But meeting like, him. I, don't, I love penis jokes. Yeah, I, I just bring him on. And, but after meeting him, I was like, oh, sh yeah, this is a lot of penis jokes. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about a lot of penises right now. <laughs> you know, but like my, my brother's actually like, like one of like my biggest role models growing up. Oh, yeah. You know. I think I think he's like a, one of those people that you go to whenever you need advice and things like that. I I I, I tell my brother actually I'm like, dude, you would be so great on a podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe that'll be something in the future. Yeah. But as far as him uh, meeting specific people or reading the room, you know, like I feel like all of us kind of could lack reading the room mm -hmm. specifically. You know, not me. Not you. <laughs> You're perfect. <laughs> That's why I'm with you. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I uh, <laughs> no. No, no. I'm doing the thing you do. You know how you always say no when you mean yes. I say no when I. I mean bet. Did Did you turn off the lights downstairs? Oh no, I did. Yeah. <laughs> do you know anybody else that does that? Because I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like whenever somebody says, "Oh, do you mind?" They're like, "Oh, no, 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 no," which technically means you do, right? Because it's a. Uh, Oh wait, no, no am I saying that wrong? You're, that's back. <laughs> that's backwards. No wait, but you know what I mean. Like it's a, when somebody says, "Wait, do you mind?" And then they say, oh, yes, no. People say no because they feel like they're answering, but the correct word would be saying yes. Are you trying to say that you don't mind at all? Yeah, don't mind at all. Okay, so if somebody says, oh, hey, like, do you mind if I take this chair? Yeah. So you're saying some people will be like, oh, yeah, no, I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind. I feel like that's the way you... That's even how I right speak. now, I just confused myself. Wait. Yeah, that's how I speak. Because it's so backwards, yeah. Yeah, but I, to me, that's just normal i guess right. like i expect you to but understand I get it. no but i get it is what i'm saying that's why like I if i say example. no first just wait until the after no to get the full answer yeah <laughs> it's like hey babe did you eat already uh no yeah i had breakfast this morning <laughs> <laughs> no but you have a little bit of a pause just You're like oh yeah no i had breakfast this morning just forget the no like the no is not just drop the no, just yeah. drop the no. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's hot in this room and we haven't had breakfast yet <laughs> i know yeah, no, we haven't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, we haven't. No, no, no. Anyways, oh, I'm right. <laughs> this wasn't a me versus you were I right know, I know, it's a joke. or left type of thing. Um, I'm going to turn the air. Hang on. All right, I got the AC going. My pits are starting to dry up again. Um, welcome back again to the Kids Are Asleep podcast. Are they asleep right now? Cruz is a little... Bit. He's moving a little bit. Ziggy's is knocked out. Knocked out. I can't talk right now. <laughs> Apparently, neither could I earlier. Um, what's crazy is right now we're going through. I, I don't know what's up with Ziggy's. Mm -hmm. He's waking up. Like normally, we were very proud to be like, yeah, our kids go to sleep like twelve hours, ten hours. And lately, once we put him down to bed last night, what was it like? At one. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Ezekiel woke up. Crying, screaming. Crying. I was, I was, I was going to bed early. <laughs> that was early for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna go to bed early. Um, there I am on TikTok. 
but he's just like he's not really falling asleep right now and we don't know if there's like a growth spur or if he's got his more, like more teeth coming in yeah so it started like two weeks ago where he had a high fever but i think that was because he was teething but since then he's just kind of been fussy He's not, like, sleeping how he used to sleep. He'll wake up. It, it seems like every time they wake up from a nap, well, he wakes up from a nap, he's, like, crying and screaming. Like, it's just that that never happens. And so the past two days, he's woken up in, like, the middle of his sleep crying. He can't fall asleep unless he's in one of our arms. Yeah. Um, Which is why I look like this, because I'm with him. <laughs> what, <laughs> well, we pretty? take we take turns. But for the most part, like, he doesn't fall asleep. Thank you. He doesn't fall asleep until he, unless he's in my arm. Yeah. And then I started to notice, like, he's sleeping in our bed now. Yeah. Which we, I don't think we've ever done that really with the boys. But no. But the reason why I bring him to bed is because I'm with him for, like, 30 minutes, rocking him back and forth. Mm. I get tired. My back starts to hurt. So I'm like, the you're going to come heavier. with me in bed then. Mm. So that's why if you wake up randomly and we're next to each other, it's because he's there. Yeah. This morning, I didn't even notice you were just like, babe, you were snoring. Yeah. So loud. <laughs> snoring. What, what was he doing? You said he was laughing. He was laughing every time he heard you snore. And I thought it was like the cutest thing. Because to me, if I wake up and you're snoring, sometimes I get scared. Like the noise. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the noises of like your snores, because it like gradually gets louder and louder and louder. Oops. So then I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just sleep in one of the other rooms and right? pop in in the morning. Hey, babe. How'd you sleep? <laughs> Good. Was the next to you? No. No, but um, yeah, he thought it was funny, and I thought it was funny, and then I later left the room because it was distracting him. Your snores were distracting us. Well, sorry. What are you doing? I, that was by accident. You know how sometimes you can look down at your phone and it, you it opens it up on a notification. That's what oh happened. yeah, but your hand. Yeah. Your placement. I didn't really do anything. I was watching Tyson Fury. Um, dance uh with the mariachi team at the dallas stadium ah yes ah yes boxing mariachis things that you don't care about you like mariachi though yeah mariachi's cool no what were you saying before that just how you were distracting us last night with your snoring <laughs> <laughs> but he found it funny and he was like laughing but he found it funny he thought it was he was laughing at it which made me laugh but then i later had to leave the room because it was just distracting him but Anyways, moral of the story is Ezekiel's going through something. I don't know what it is. It could be growth spurts. It could sleep regression. He's just like flipping his schedule around. But yeah, that's kind of it with him. Well, Cruz is knocked out of sleep. He's out. He, he this just, kid is just. We go over. We change his diaper. He's asleep. He's just like go for it, dude. I know. And then we put him back in the crib, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. That whole entire thing. <laughs> no, I was I was laughing at the silence. Oh, I was afterwards. laughing at you. <laughs> Let's get back on the topic of cringy, though. Because talk yeah, about how you never knew the word cringy. I didn't know. Oh, well, clearly I was born before you. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember. Okay, so let's 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 take it back. To me, I think I did find a lot of things cringy. But the word cringe wasn't as popular to use um, like throughout high school, I think. There was a lot of things that I didn't like specifically, and I didn't have the right word to describe it. I'd be like, oh, that's just like annoying or I don't know. They're trying too hard. Mm -hmm. As things progressed and then like people started using the word cringe, like I remember thinking like, damn, that's that's the way to describe specific things. With my friends, th there was a thing where back in the days – People would always look at each other after a good conversation of like, I don't know, people relating to something uh -huh. and they'd look at each other and go like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Like they, they just spoke about some crazy story and they go, hey, good times. And then the other person would repeat it and go, good times. <laughs> and they would say it twice, like <laughs> good times, good times. So I found that cringy mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to use that word. Right. So I would I would open up to say like my friends, Tim. Peter, Rick, and they kind of made fun of me for it because they were like, for some reason, Eric decided that he didn't like the the phrase good times, good times. And it wasn't until 
I think I did like a mukbang with Tim and I just used the word like it just came out. I was like, no, dude, it's because I fa- like I found it cringy. And I think they thought like I was just trying to create a thing that I hated and it be a thing, uh-huh. you know, like trying to make fetch happen. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was like I legit just found things cringy. And that was one of the things when people were in, in mid conversation, like, hey, good times, good times. Like shut the f- up. <laughs> I, I can see. I can see how it's cringy because why say it twice? Yeah, why say it why twice? Why say it twice? That's that's yeah. weird. So whenever you came into my life and you found things cringy, <laughs> I was like, I get you, I get it. And then there was little things that you were doing. I'm like, no, that, that's in your head. But then they slowly become become became something in my head. Mm-hmm. You know, so I thought that was really interesting. Can you name some of the things that I find cringy? Well, you hate sounds, right? So you hate water. <laughs> okay, you hate noise. You hate, um, not that you hate, but if I'm in mid-conversation and if a word comes out like that, <laughs> <laughs> you will not let that shit go. Even though other people try to play it off, right? In conversations, people are like, yeah, you know, if I come at and blah, 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 then you will have this face like. <laughs> <laughs> and once you're done, I'll bring once it you're up. Done, like, you know, and other people don't like pick up on that. Like they're kind of like used to like, uh, let me just cover this up, you know, keep talking. And you know, you're hanging on to that <laughs> the entire time, not even listening to what the other person has to say. And you're like, um, oh, mm-hmm, yeah, <laughs> voice cracked, you know. So I think that's a, a funny thing you find. Uh, cringe. I mean, what you? It's say? not cringy. It's just funny. Yeah. Like, but I'm saying like you're 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 so observant to that. Yeah. Other things. So it's misophonia. Yes, misophonia. Really? Yeah. It's the um, people with misophonia are affected emotionally by common sounds. Emotionally. <laughs> 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 I swear, Can I'm you okay. write it right here on the screen. <laughs> misophonia. Mis- is misophonia? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Emotional. <laughs> I think I'm Emotion. fine. I'm fine. <laughs> That's funny. Wow. Sh- it's not to the point where like noise is make me angry because that's like a different kind of thing where like people get oh, i don't know there's a word for that too like where if you hear something it just irritates you annoys you well that <laughs> <laughs> like my it. voice <laughs> yeah like some examples above breathing yawning or chewing create a flight a fight or flight <laughs> response oh my God. that triggers anger and a desire to escape <laughs> maybe you want to escape <laughs> Chewing is is your thing too. You hear people chew, and you're just like loud breathing pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> loud breathing pisses me off. Oh man! And I'm sure there's other people. You know, yeah, that, I'm sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> Please tell me I'm yeah, not the you're only. Not the only <laughs> mis- misogynistic one. You know? <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> no, but I've just always Thank noticed. A- <laughs> I've always just noticed that, like, oh, cool. um, in case nobody caught that. Sorry, go ahead. I've always just noticed. <laughs> i'm crying um i just think noises are funny they're funny and it's funny to call people out on them yeah (laughs) i think they're hilarious for me i i can still hear a fart in a movie or in person i still crack up Mm -hmm. (laughs) unless it comes out of your body for some reason i would be like "Mm." Mm, what (laughs) Where was that? <laughs> I'm like, huh? How do you feel about that? Not to like super change the conversation, oh, but I think this could be a good little clip. We could talk about um, how women in today's like world is, is, is not like, what's the word I'm looking for? Appropriate or uh, it's not ladylike for a woman to fart really in front of like their men or, or their their spouses. Um, well, how do you feel about it? Like for me, like, I think I've always grown up thinking like, oh, it's gross. But like, I totally understand that it happens. And maybe because I wasn't raised with like sisters or girls, really, you know, I, I think maybe like, that's what I'm used to. Like not yeah. hearing a girl fart, especially a pretty one. Right. <laughs> thinking like, you know, we're having a nice little moment and you're <laughs> and <we're>, mm. <laughs> like, that's just my, I'll top that. You know, <laughs> it's like, is that all you got? <laughs> <laughs> but Here's the thing. I don't think it's necessarily like. Because there's some girls that are just 
I'm sorry. <laughs> you gave a face like, are you cutting me off, mother? Uh, go ahead. We're gonna talk about that later. <laughs> um, I don't think it's safe to say that it's always been inappropriate for women to fart in front of men. <coughs> I think it's just kind of been like it's never something that was like said that like women are not allowed to fart in front of men. And I feel like a lot of women these days are very open to being like accept me for who i am this is who i am if i want to fart i'm gonna fart and just love me for who right. i am for me i Which would more power to them more power to them but if that's not my type partnered yeah supports that but um <laughs> supports your <laughs> supports your ass and bowel and movement but for me i would like to say i'm very old school and i think my mom my mom has said i get it from like my grandma um i personally don't think it's appropriate for girls or at least speaking for myself i don't think it's appropriate for me to burp or fart in front of anybody and i personally find it gross i do um if that's what you do that's what you do i'm not gonna say anything if like i have a best friend which i don't but if (laughs) (laughs) if i were to like have be around girls and they were to fart or burp i wouldn't bash them for it but it deep down be like oh like that was like kind of gross Mm -hmm. you know like don't don't do that (laughs) yes (laughs) i'm not your best friend you are but you're a guy it doesn't count (laughs) you're you're a guy and you fart all the time you're you're a guy you literally farted like downstairs (laughs) what i like though and it's like yeah i'm I'm actually pretty gross like i'm always farting and i find it funny you find it hilarious (laughs) It's uh, this moment, his timings, and how he does it. Like I remember watching the scene from uh, Dumb and Dumber and that toilet scene with uh, Jeff Daniels, like doing that whole entire like toilet scene. And as a kid, I cracked up so hard. And then I remember meeting like um, well, one of my my drama teacher, Mr. Carlin, mm-hmm. R.I.P. He um, he was always saying like, no, don't ever use farts or anything like like that's cheap comedy. Mm-hmm. And so like I almost started to put it in my head like, oh man, maybe this isn't funny anymore. But I still kept laughing and I, I eventually was just like, ah, everyone has their own taste, you know, Yeah, that's it. But I think it's funny how like how gross I am when it comes to like farting or like I'll point a little gun at you and go. Pop. And I think it's funny. I find it hilarious. And I feel like a lot of times you laugh um, or you're like, oh, gross. And I can always tell like with your level of gross because most of the time you're laughing. But what you're talking about, sometimes there are times where you're just like, eh, come on. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> like, really? Really right now? Did it have to sound like that too? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I think for me personally, I don't do that, especially in front of you. Yeah. And, and it's I, like I appreciate that very much that, that you keep your booty clean. nice and closed. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I, I I think I've only heard you fart maybe twice. And it was on accident. <laughs> and they were both on accident. Maybe I was tickling <laughs> you or I was laying on your stomach and there was a quick... Sorry, eek, Andy. <laughs> quick little... <laughs> But, I mean, the reason why we're talking about this is because there are some people that are very strong. Like, who gives up? You know, like, I, I'll fart. If mm-hmm. he can do it, like, it's normal. This is what this is normal. But, you know. And that's fine. And that's fine. But at yeah. the same time, like, you know, if people want to be. <laughs> like, I, I love our relationship and then we could talk about it and you just don't fart in front of me. Yeah. I, I find it gross. And it, it's, again, it's not because I don't fart because he doesn't like it. I don't do that in front of him because I don't like it. And it's just, it, we just so happen to agree on that topic. Yeah, so it's like, perfect match. if I do, then it's, I'll leave, go somewhere else, or I'm in the bathroom. And not to gas you up, but I love that about you. Thank you. You're a real hole-in-one. <laughs> you are the sh- I am. It has a fart noise. <laughs> <laughs> but no, farts are and funny. And you're like, until now. <laughs> <laughs> love me. <laughs> watch once once we're officially married that's when i just let loose <laughs> just like he finally proposed i could finally be myself <laughs> i'm just kidding but like in, in your household like you guys like your family you guys didn't really like fart in front of each other or no i don't think so like you have you know i have two older sisters i think maybe they probably have i'm not sure but whenever it came to me i just was never comfortable even in like my own home you would run to the bathroom to fart or you would just hold it in and have like tummy aches all day tummy aches belly a little bit of both like if i have to hold it in i'll hold it in um but if i see a chance to go to the bathroom i mm. feel like girls that um have you ever met girls just, oh, my stomach hurts maybe because in front of all these people like they've just been holding in their pedals all day no but what a lot of people don't know is like girls we will release them in front of people we just don't say it or make an announcement Ew. or i feel like i feel like us girls can kind of control yeah, it 
Like, you kind of, like, I feel like there's a way to control how you release it. You know, I feel like for guys, you just, like, <laughs> but for girls, we're like, okay, let's do this inner breathing technique, and then we're going to slowly push it down, and then, <laughs> Well, you remember Jenna Marbles, she once had, like, um, this whole conversation about wearing thongs, and how a thong cuts the fart in half, <laughs> like, releasing it, and just having, like, the, she's like, yeah, if you think about it, it's science. <laughs> it's like a string, and it cuts the, you know, it makes it more... F- more fooey. <laughs> I love that. We just got I believe it. Um, Sometimes it can stop a fart. It's just like, it's like, oh, I got a fart. Nope. Stop. Get back in there. You're like, okay. <laughs> you ever have those moments where you're silent with someone else and then your stomach just goes. Boom? Yeah. You know, that's like first couple dates when dating someone. That kind of shit <laughs> happens. And the car ride home, you're just like. Burp, 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 burp. Beep, beep. You're like, what's the that smell? Uh, I think we just passed like a riverbank or something. <laughs> 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 Not really sure. <laughs> you mean uh, uh, a oh, there was a, a reservoir? Of yeah. Water over that way. Ooh, roll up the windows. The reservoir. <laughs> we roll up the windows. No, no, no. Keep them <laughs> roll them down. Roll them down. <laughs> Have you ever had exes though that like would fart or been with somebody that would fart in front mm. of you? <laughs> I won't say who. I'll tell you later. But I mean, uh, <laughs> it's just gonna be in the comments. Oh, for sure, this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was there was some that would definitely uh, let uh, it go. fart or let it go. Mm-hmm. You, you never know, said can't anything. Hold it back you would never say anything to them. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you were a little late on that one. <laughs> I was. I was mad at myself because I didn't say it fast enough. Um, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying? I said you would never say anything to them or let them know how you felt about it. Um, I think, I think I would just, I, I would kind of make just faces, kind of like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I'd stop eating. <laughs> like, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh, hang on. You know, like this person would run off and like stick their ass outside of a door <laughs> far and then come back in. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. Wait, you're being serious? That's the thing, yeah. Like you were with somebody that would do that? Yeah. Uh-huh. They would run to the door, stick their ass out, fart, and then come back. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's like a little respectful. <laughs> 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 like, hold on. You are not welcomed here. <laughs> <laughs> Big on. I rebuke you. And she, comes, she, she comes back in bed. Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> I release. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh i never knew that you poor thing <laughs> um yeah oh uh, uh, there's a few moments here and there i just think it's i just think it's like manners you know if somebody's eating if 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 anybody in general comes into your house i think it's just manners like you're not gonna well i mean you know they'd stick their ass out the door you know so that's kind <laughs> of you know i get it you know but at the same time you know i don't know so Let's move on from that gassy subject. <laughs> please. Uh, please. Um, another thing I wanted to talk to you about was I love, like, we can have conversations like that and just crack up. I love how um, there's certain things that you'll discover about yourself and you'll open up. Or there's things that I discover about myself that I feel I need to work on. Um, and I think that's dope that we both can sit there, listen to each other and be like, yeah, you know, I do this a lot. Right. Or um, I, I, I worry too much about what like people care uh, in, in, in specific things, you know, mm-hmm. or and there's things that I open up to you about. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I should just kind of let that go. And you just hear my whole spiel. And I feel like one of them recently was like um, validation. Yeah. Right. Like like there's sometimes where um, even right now, like when I was trying to make that joke like earlier. Where. I was just like, damn, I wanted you to hear it. And I wanted you, I wanted it to be faster for you to, and that was loud. <laughs> I wanted you to really um, take it in and, you know, just have a moment there. And I think that's such an interesting thing as human beings. We always kind of want that validation. We want to, you know, make that joke that makes other people laugh. We want to be very presentable. Uh, we want to, um, I don't know, other examples. <laughs> and I think it's, it's such a dope thing to kind of stop really reflect and then see what you can work on Mm -hmm. to not let that affect you so much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Are there any examples like that for you that you see in your life that, Oh, I didn't get the credit that I wanted for this um, situation and mm, it bugged me. 
you know, where, where maybe someone else took the credit, right? I, I'm sure there has been, but I feel like it's one of those things where I try not to let it get to me or I try to brush it off, at least not hold a grudge to it. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure in my life, like, there's been times where I feel like I wasn't given the proper credit, validation, you know? Yeah, I mean, I can't, like, pinpoint an example, yeah. though. But I, I think it's normal. I feel like everybody goes through that. Yeah. Andy, do you have anything like that? Uh, when I wash the dishes and she doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> oh, you know, that's a good one. Yeah. Actually, it could be, like, small minor th- stuff. Yeah, thank you. It could be small things like the other day I cleaned the pantry out. And he didn't say anything about it. I was like, oh, did you see that I cleaned the pantry? He's like, yeah, I saw it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, it's actually pretty clean and organized. And I took my time doing it, and my back hurts <laughs> now. And he doesn't care. But it's like, I feel like it, it could be small stuff, but I feel like validation is a very emotional thing. Yeah. Emotional validation is can, you know, be a pain in the ass. Yeah. I don't think I say it enough, maybe. Um, but there's, like, a lot of times where I come home, like, from the gym. And you have, like, you just baked a whole sheet of, like, veggies, you know, Brussels sprouts and green beans and, like, broccoli and everything that you um, have set up for dinner. And then you make a, a meat and then, you know, you serve me my, my plate and I'm just like, oh, thanks, bud. But I think there's 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 more times that I could be more, like, hey, really, thank you. Like, that was awesome. <laughs> You're like, no, I'm not going to lie. That I think that's been one of them. Really? Like, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I haven't because it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I feel like for moms too, which I'm not I'm not saying he doesn't show me his gratitude and like appreciation. There are a lot of times where you do remind me like, you know what? You're doing amazing. You're an amazing mom. I love you. Keep it up. I see what you're doing around the house. Like I don't have to ask him for that because he does it naturally. But I think throughout the day, you know, there are some stuff where it's like, huh, I did that, yeah. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> yeah, no, there's, there's a lot of things you do around the house that I'm... Um, I'm just, like, very uh, fortunate to have, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't want to cry. No. <clears throat> I, was actually I mean, for vice versa, like, we both carry different roles. <laughs> Good damn it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think, I think, so, so that's why I wanted to talk about this, because, like, like, something that we, I noticed, like, when we started doing the podcast, like, the first, like, the first test episode, I'd crack jokes, and you'd be like, so, I think for me, and I'm like... But I can that. tell you right now, I genuinely didn't hear that one until you looked at Andy, and I was like, oh, I think he just yeah. said something. Um, and then I was like, oh, I'm sorry. So that's something that, like, I want to work on, you know, because I feel like, damn it, she didn't catch it. Or like, okay, well, whatever. I can have those two, you know, type of reactions. But yeah, I think it's because, like, a lot of times whenever we're speaking to, like, we're always thinking of what we're going to say next. Mm-hmm. So we're almost waiting for the other person to stop talking, <laughs> to start talking again. Or I, I, I just feel like naturally, too, we, we can communicate fast. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like, oh, could take your coffee. time. Just yeah, it could be the coffee. <laughs> coffee and no food. Could be the gas. <laughs> <laughs> could be the gas. <laughs> oh, everything just comes back to the gas. Full circle. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, but that that's, mm-hmm. I feel like what happens with us a lot. Yeah. Also, I do tend to interrupt. Sorry. <laughs> interrupt. <laughs> interrupt, you do. Um, And I do it too. I think I'm I'm pretty good at like, always being like oh well, let's get back to what you were saying i'm sorry oh oh i'm sorry I, I cut you off or i go back into something i feel like you know a lot of our friends can do that but there's also certain friends that don't um I, and i want to get back to the validation stuff right now but let's let's talk about this real quick i i would always and i think i did a video like years ago talking about how i get annoyed when people interrupt me mm-hmm. and it's really hard for me to to hide that cuz i will literally kind of roll my eyes or you've told me that you're like, babe, um, when they interrupt you, like, you know, you got to be careful because you, you do this a lot. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and I don't notice it. I think that's one of those things like me being this observer person. I'm just like, oh, shit, like I missed one. But I'm always down to, um, you know, have some humility and like hear it out and go from there. But, yeah, I think I've I've always, especially like around like in high school, like just hearing a bunch of girls, like, like talking to a bunch of chicks that are all talking about something. But the conversation will go like, yeah, well, I got my nails done. But let me see. Oh, my God. You need to go to my lady. She's like, no, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. My mom does my nails. She does nails? Like, oh, how's your mom? She's good. I mean, you know, her, her leg, blah, blah, blah. And then they, they go from this, and all of a sudden it goes into puppies. Yeah. And you're like, what happened? Mm-hmm. Go, go back, you know? Mm-hmm. When it comes to that, I feel like it's a lot of people to them is normal. Because, for instance, for me, I grew up in a family of six two there's four girls in total 
um, with my dad and then my little brother came in later. But when you're in a household that's very, very loud and you're constantly having to to try to get your word out there, you're being loud, you're cutting people off, you're doing whatever it takes to be heard. Yeah. And so I feel like for me, it was normal. I thought I was always talking normal until I, until being with you and you pointed that I interrupt you a lot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait, do I? No, I didn't. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, you just interrupted me. And I'm just like, shoot, I, I guess I have that problem. Yeah. And it wasn't until dating you where I started to notice w- other people interrupt now. And now it's kind of starting to bother me where I'm like, that person just interrupted you. Yeah. Why are you interrupting me right now? Yeah. I don't say it internally, but I'm, I notice it now. Right. But I feel like it just depends on people's upbringing. Like, it's something very natural to me that I do. And also to keep up with topics. Like, you put a bunch of girls together in the room, and we could keep up with 10 conversations. But Mm -hmm. with other people, it's kind of like, can we just stay on one, please? Also, can you hear me out until I'm finished? Mm -hmm. Um, I think what's crazy is that because because I know that other people can do that, you know, um, conversations can be very fickle, and they just, they bounce around everywhere. Um. So I feel like um, I've gotten pretty good at like being in a group and and s- telling myself like okay so it's gonna kind of go all over the place. Um, if I feel like someone is saying a story, like I'll find a good way to segue back. I'm like oh yeah no that's crazy yeah and and that's how you know uh, people uh, will do crazy. Sh-. But anyways, you were saying you know and you just kind of go back into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, oh yeah, thank you. And what I realized is, is people like do remember sometimes like, I'm sorry, like, like go ahead. Uh, uh, they were talking, they were talking, they were, what were you saying? Yeah. You know, so it shows that you're interested in one, you, it shows that you're interested in like what they were saying and you yeah. want to hear, you know, the rest of that story, whatever it is. So I don't know if any of you muffs out there are interrupt the ass mother, bitch, <laughs> mother, to be, but, uh, yeah, I guess just be a little more conscious, like, like being in the moment and understanding, um, you know, I guess conversations, but also don't be a dick about it because even right now you're saying like, oh, you would always tell me like, interrupt each other. <laughs> I interrupt you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come off rude if, it, if no. it ever did. No, it never came off rude. It came off something that I needed to respect that you. I, I, I just thought I was being helpful. Not yeah. so much like you need to respect me. No. Or you need to, like it was just kind of like, like if I can give her a tip right now type of deal, you know, then maybe this is something she could work on. Yeah. And you've done, you know, I, and I feel like you've done the same for me. Right. You're like, hey, babe, um, earlier today, you know, um, Andy was talking to you and you totally ignored him. No, you know, like, sorry. <laughs> and he's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, but like examples like that. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've always felt very, very happy that we can just communicate that kind of stuff and won't get offended. Mm-hmm. At least right away. Yeah. Validation. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, like I've always had um. At the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning of like saying like even shooting like um like videos, right? You know, with Alex or Peter, or Tim and stuff like that. Like, I remember that there was times where like there was a scene happening, something that I wasn't in, but I wanted to give like my um I don't know helpful tip, like oh you should say this, this will be funny. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes they can use it or they don't, but when they use it, there's a little part of me, right? And I don't know if anybody feels this way, but like. You know, if you help someone out and then they use it and, and it turns out great for them and you have a little like, oh, it's because of me. Mm-hmm. So that little moment, that would happen a lot with like videos, right? Um, so I, I would always have that and, and be like, oh, okay, well, well that's cool. I'm, I'm glad it worked out. But then when like the comments would roll in, then they'd be like, oh my God, this person is a genius. Who would have ever thought like, you know, for him to do this or say this? And in my head, I'm like, he's getting all the credit. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I felt like, no, Eric, stop, stop thinking that way. You know, like you should just be proud because the whole thing collaboratively looked great and all of you guys look good as a team, you know? So that's something that I've like, I've worked on through the years. Um, especially as like I directed, edited, you know, produced all the videos and then I acted in it, you know, and I was constantly worried about everything else except the acting really sometimes, which is what I love to do. Um, whenever I have like conversations with myself in my head, I'm always telling myself, just like, man, why, why do I always feel like I need to be validated? Why do I always feel like I need the credit? You know, if like something happens, like I won't tell anybody, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll maybe find one person be like, you see that scene? Like that was me, you know? And I don't know how many other people can relate to that, you know, talking about that. And I feel like maybe somebody or everybody has like a story, like in their past, maybe where they felt like there was some empty part there or they didn't speak up on something. 
And I don't, I don't think I've ever, did I ever tell you about my story of, uh, I think it was like me in fourth or third grade, like um, I won second place in a race. No, you never told me that. So, oh, let me tell you. <laughs> you be a demon. <laughs> Sorry, I have something in my eye and it's not going away. What is it? <laughs> I don't know. So if you see me trying to get it, just mind your business. Your eyeball. <laughs> mind your business. <laughs> mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> you're <over here> just <laughs> I'm in try. Picking your eye and your butt and farting. Right. So there's a story. Um, when I was younger, I remember they were doing a race at my middle school. Uh-huh. And we had to do like a lap or two or whatever. I don't know. And I came in second place. And I was like really happy. Um, and whenever they were doing the ceremony, like the medal ceremony, they gave me the bronze medal. And I, I was... I was so confused because I looked at the kid that came in third place and I stared at him and I was like, did you, did you come in? I came in. I I, I think I should have that, the the silver. And he goes, oh, they gave it to me. Mm. And I didn't say anything. And I remember like, I remember that moment and feeling like, like thinking like, should I, should I say something? And I didn't. And instead I went home with my bronze and like my, my entire, like, I still think about that moment and just holding on to and just like. Damn, I won silver though. That's so sad. But I, yeah, <laughs> but I didn't say anything, and I remember thinking like, um, because right now I'm talking, you know, we're talking about all of this, and that's like the earliest uh, information I have in my head of like me feeling like I didn't speak up, or I didn't say anything. So when I go through my life, you know, and like little things like you know accomplishments or things that I was a part of, you know, like I'm always like, you know, I, I want to feel like, oh well, you know, I got did I get credit for that. You know, and I think the same thing can happen with anybody at work, um, anything with schoolwork and whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I've ever shared that story with you. I think when you feel like you're putting so much effort and work into something that you're very passionate about and you don't get that recognition that you think that you should at least get for a little bit, I think it can weigh on you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> because who doesn't want to be noticed? Who doesn't want to be like, you know, greeted and what's the word not like celebrated but appreciated for everything that you've done okay yeah and i feel like for you you know you put so much work into like your videos you're the producer the director the editor the actor you know you're getting everybody into this one big project and in the end when you see comments that are giving credit to everybody else you're kind of just like pushed back you're pushed back i guess i don't i mean i don't have a pushback um no but i'm saying like people tend to push you back and bring somebody else forward mm-hmm. into the light and you're just kind of yeah. like well well, I mean, you know, I get it. It's fine. Good for them. But also, I feel like a lot of people aren't aware of what really goes into all of it, yeah. which is. Right. And and I, and I think what, what I started to do was the same thing, right? Like, so when I watch a good film and I, and I see it's a specific director and I'm like, oh, it's going to be good because I like the vision that this director has. And I'm sure, you know, like being a director is like almost like a selfless um, job. Like you're putting in all this work into making everything look good, look good, look great, and you, and you work these crazy hours, um, and you're there for every scene, and at the end it'll be like, oh, the, you know, that the actor f- killed it, or like the way he said this line, right? you know, it's the writers and everything, but it's all like collaborative. But the only ones that get like the glory is like those that walk the red carpet, the face of it, yeah, the the face of these, uh, you know, like think of Iron Man, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is amazing, but you know, um. What's his name? Favreau? Uh, John, Favreau. John Favreau. Like, um, like he, I think he's an amazing director. And he did Iron Man 1, 2. Did he do 2 and 3? Just 2. Just 2. So, anyways, like, like when people have a specific vision to work things out, like, it, it just comes out badass. Yeah. And that happens with a lot of music. Like, I was on TikTok the other day, mm. and this person, this guy was dedicating, you know, like, TikTok, uh, like, a series onto like the people behind the most top songs and it's like you know we praise the songs we love the songs we hear them all the time on the radio but he was bringing light to the songwriters behind the scenes like this is the person who wrote your lyrics to the your favorite song this is the person that made the beat to your favorite song and i'm just like wow and the girl duet the video and she was like thank you you know like this is me also i did this song and this song and people were like what you did all these songs that are like top charts and i was like damn you really don't know the face behind like you know, the people yeah. who probably feel unappreciated yeah. or go unnoticed. But I'm pretty sure they get their, their royalties or checks. Their fair and, share. And they're, they're cool with that. Some people love that role. Yeah. I think. Some people are okay with just kind of, you know, 
um, being behind the scenes and just creating things and selling it. And that, that, that's enough for them to be, you know, happy and content. Yeah. Um, but there's other people that, that use it and then want to be like, oh, okay, well, I want to become an upcoming songwriter myself. Like Bruno Mars was writing for a while, you know, um, Sean Kingston. And I think, um, a bunch of other people were like writers for other people, mm-hmm. you know, who writes for Drake. Like there was, there was someone that was writing for Drake for a while or uh, still is. I don't know. There's a thing about Jake, like he steals music and all that stuff. <laughs> I think is there so, really? Right? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I feel like in our relationship, we do that as well. Like. If somebody asks uh, something like, oh, like, well, Vanessa, that was awesome that you did that. I will give you the credit. I'm like, oh, actually, I started doing it because Eric point like told me, gave me the mm. advice to do it. Or if somebody brings something up, like you'll give me the validation or like the credit for it. And I feel like those small things mean a lot to us because it's mm-hmm. like, well, you know, he's not just going to be like, oh, thank you. I took all the credit. But it's like yeah. you're also acknowledging your partner and how you guys work as a team. Yeah. And I feel like that's important too. Like, don't just be like, oh yeah, thank you. You know, bloat or what's a gloat about it? Yeah. But also like, I, I do, th- I do feel like there's a lesson there of like, really just who cares? <laughs> no. Yeah. And, and you know what I mean? Like, like I, I mean it like, and in a relationship, if that's what works for us, like if, you know, you're doing a lot around the house and you, you know, you just want some appreciation, like, yeah, talk to me about it. Like I'm, I'm more than happy to just be like, baby, thank you so much for, you know, what you're doing, you know, cooking and cleaning and. I didn't even notice, like, you know, you swapped out the toilet paper today. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, thanks. No. <laughs> you know, like, li- little things. Um, but I feel like when it comes to, like, work and business, stuff like that, like, you know, keep it professional and then just just be happy that collaborative, collaboratively, like, something came out great and you were like, oh, cool. I was, a part, part, of that. Of I was a part of that project, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I think it's more important to kind of just see the bigger picture sometimes. Yeah. But I want my f-ing silver medal. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's so sad, though. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no one says thank you. <laughs> You're like, I ran so hard. <laughs> and even though I got second, that's my f-ing medal. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a, that's a good way to, to end. I just want to say, um, in second place, we have right? Eric Ochoa. Oh. Silver medal. Yeah. Do you still have that medal to this day? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Uh, it's in a box somewhere, probably. But you still have it. Rotting. <laughs> Bronzing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was funny. All right, well, we'll end. Uh, you could have just painted it silver. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> just go home, just mother. <laughs> With glitter, you're just glitter like oh, yeah. that's color into my. <laughs> but there, there was there was just a lot of my life that went like that. I feel like in my middle school years and my teen years, um, high school, like where there was just things where I was like, I was just very passive about them. I'm just kind of like, oh well, actually, I, I, like, I, you weren't confrontational. No, I didn't really want to. You know, hey, listen here, buddy. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that you know whatever it was. Yeah. So I was just kind of like mm, whatever. And then I started, like, taking notice of that and being like, oh, it hurts sometimes. Mm-hmm. And now going back to, like, okay, cool, resolved it. And at the end of the day, I'm happy that I was a part of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, thank you for so much for watching. <laughs> I was going to make a joke. I was going to make a joke, like, well, you'll always be second place to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're number one. Well, let me see. <laughs> just kidding. Thank you for tuning in on this uh, episode of... Shh, the kids are asleep podcast. Are they still asleep? They're knocked out. <laughs> cool, you want to do another episode? Let's change our shirts and... We switch shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's not a bad idea. That'd be funny. <laughs> just episode four, they're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribed. Hit the notification bell uh, so you know when we post a video. Um, we do have an Instagram, and by that, I mean it's down below. Make sure you follow it. And um, yeah, thank you for um, for allowing me to be second place in your heart. You're welcome. Anytime. First is the kids. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can be first with them. I mean, there's two, actually. So technically, I mean, first, you could be your third. <laughs> back to bronze. <laughs> 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 All right. Bye. <laughs>